lovers, it is G-Swizz here, and I am here today to talk about some books that got me out of a reading slump. If you didn't know, this is a 7 on Sunday topic, and I am the host of 7 on Sunday. I will link the Goodreads page down in the description where you can check it out, and you can participate in a topic in the future, or you can suggest a topic. This week's topic is just pretty much inspired by the fact that I really love beating reading slumps. I think anybody who is an avid reader much prefers not to be in a reading slump, so they don't necessarily have to dread picking any book up or getting into a new series. It's very funny because I tend to read a lot in a year. However, I do get into reading slumps pretty often. I have to somehow push through them. In fact, two days ago, I read a book that gave me like a huge book hangover and I found myself in some sort of reading slump where I just wasn't really enjoying anything until I recently read a book. And since then, I read another book because of that. I feel like I'm back into the kick. So with me, for some reason, reading slumps can last a really long time or they can last a very short time, but I still feel the slumpy mood. So I'm going to talk about some books that personally got me out of a reading slump, but every book that I'm going to talk about today will get someone else out of a reading slump because it really depends on the mood that you're in, it depends on the books that you like, all that stuff, etc. I find it very interesting what kind of books get certain people out of their reading slump. So I thought I would share my experiences and kind of talk about how ugly my reading slumps were and how I overcame them by reading these certain books. So I guess without further do, I'm gonna get stuck into this video. The first book I'm gonna talk about that got me out of a reading slump is a very old book. Like, this book came out, I don't know, like, back in 2015, 2016. But what I do know is that I pretty much read this book. I devoured this series four or five years ago. I binge read the series. I absolutely fell in love with the concept of the world and these characters. Sometimes I just wish that I could revisit this book series because of how much of a chokehold it had on me to the point that I was excited to read anything after reading this book series. Now, my friends, is the Firebird Trilogy by Claudia Gray. The book that I'm holding up here is the first book in the series called A Thousand Pieces of You. I remember everybody was talking about it based on its cover, but no one was really talking about it based on the actual story. And I loved the actual story. I waited until all three books were out and published so I could binge read the series, and that was a good decision. This is technically a sci-fi multi-dimension young adult series. I think the only gripe that I had with this book series at the time, I believe that there was a love triangle in here that kind of just annoyed me, but I loved this series so much, and I believe that sequel was even stronger, and it had a very interesting conclusion. I don't actually completely remember how everything ended, but I do still remember fragments of the story and really enjoying it and really enjoying the intensity of it to the point that I just could not put the series down. I just remember having a really bad reading slump before I picked it up, and I'm so happy I gave this series a chance when no one was hyping it up. If you guys are looking for a backlist young adult series with a very unique concept that has to do with like multi-dimensional travel, I would highly recommend the Firebird Trilogy. And speaking of throwbacks, I have to bring the Shatter Me series up. I remember this reading slump like it was yesterday. The reading slump that I went through, I don't know what happened before then, but long story short, sometime in 2016, I went through a temporary facial deformity known as Bell's Palsy. And not only that, at the time I did not know this. Now I know this now, it has officially been diagnosed and I'm receiving ongoing treatment for it. I also had clinical anxiety. So leaving the house knowing that my face was deformed even if it was temporary was really scary for me. There's a lot that I couldn't do in order to not risk being injured further. When you have Bell's palsy, it is a facial nerve dislocation. My facial nerve would be like behind my neck, so I had to make sure in order to recover properly, I had to be resting where I could or I had to be very careful with my neck. And my face is back to normal now. I have no signs of permanent damage based on that deformity. And sometimes a lot of people do leave with some sort of permanent damage and I'm kind of thankful that I was able to rest at that time and I was young as well I was only 20 at the time that I had it so I had time to recover But my time indoors really encouraged me to start reading books again since the month that I had Bella's palsy I have been reading at least 10 books a month that month alone I read 33 and I remember the shatter me trilogy It was a trilogy at the time and now it's a six book series helps me get through that time It was a very rough time. I read this series. I read the 
Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I've read a few other series, but I remember Shatter Me being one of those series to get me in the swing of reading and get me prepared for just reading all the series at the time. I just remember that time in my life knowing that I was out of a reading slump because I was so attached to this series and these characters. That is kind of a reading slump that I got over that I will never forget because of that time in my life. And now I'm going to talk about the worst reading slump in my life. I'm going to talk about recovering from anhedonia. Anhedonia is a condition where you have a chemical imbalance in your brain and due to that chemical imbalance there's a lack of serotonin coming into your brain. Therefore it is really hard for you to enjoy what you do if you happen to have anhedonia. That was a really tough time in my life so I experienced anhedonia between end of 2018 and then until somewhere early in 2020. It's still something that I experience episodes of however I have recovered for the most part considering I finally received the professional help that I needed and also I'm taking the right medications. I'm enjoying life a lot more now. I'm enjoying the aspects and hobbies of life that I used to to some capacity. There are some things that I've still lost. I went through a massive reading slump in 2019 and that really impacted my content because I couldn't talk about books because I wasn't passionate about books. I wanted to unhole all my books. It was a terrible time. However, I was going through a lot of pain in this. Even though sometimes I felt robotic, I felt horrible for feeling that way because I just wanted to love things again. And then I found this series in the darkest time that helped me through my reading slump. And my friends is a manga series known as Berserk. Camillo introduced me to Berserk, I believe the night that we got together, he ended up saying something like, I don't think that you'd want to get into Berserk considering that you get squeamish while watching Game of Thrones. But its edginess is not necessarily the big point of the story. The big point of the story is that our protagonist, Guts, is going through a lot and he's constantly struggling. And you spend the entire series going on this hero's journey with him where he doesn't stop struggling. And the characters around him are also struggling in different ways as well. I just found this so impactful at the time that I was reading it because I was struggling to enjoy things in my life. My struggle does not compare to Guts' struggle. There's no one I feel more sorry for than Guts and Casca. It felt so good to read about someone who was constantly struggling but kept on getting up. And it really helped me. It's funny because like a lot of these reading slump reads I'm talking about are like a lot lighter and this is very much heavy and it will weigh on you. But it was the thing that I needed when I was going through anhedonia. I can't talk about books that I've read during a reading slump without bringing up probably the most memorable one. Anhedonia was my most memorable reading slump. Berserk is probably one of my most memorable reads ever because of how much of an impact it had on me at probably the most low point in my life so far. In between the time that I was reading Berserk, I decided to pick the Daughter of the Pirate King duology up just on a whim. This is not necessarily heavy, but it's still very plot based. So of course, like there's a bunch of stuff to sink your teeth into. However, it felt a lot lighter compared to Berserk. But also I didn't want to read anything contemporary-esque because I wasn't into contemporary. When I think about it, did my loss of love for contemporary, did that leave me with Anhedonia? I'm having a personal revelation while talking to the camera right now because I'm now enjoying romances again But for a period of time I didn't I wonder if that was one of the things I lost enjoyment for while going through my anhedonic state I wasn't very much into fantasy, but berserk was kind of the gateway back into reading It was the gateway back into fantasy for me daughter of the pirate king was my first venture back into young adult fantasy at the time I do have to say it really did help I know a lot of people either love or hate this book series and I I'm not necessarily like wild about this book series. However, I will never forget the time that I read it and how much it impacted me at the time because for me, it was incredible to finally get back into novels after not reading them for a while. And the next book that I want to mention that got me out of a reading slump is a book in a series that was pretty like controversial when it first came out. I don't know. I mean, it's probably even more controversial now due to the ending, I'd have to say. However, I really loved it when I first read it. I think I read it at the time that I needed to because if anything, Thing, it actually challenged my faith even though this book is pretty conflicting due to the religious themes and the religious themes in this book in particular. The book that I'm talking about is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. The first time I read this book I gave it a 2.5 stars. The reason why I did is because the religious themes were really difficult for me and also I couldn't really back Reed up but it was because Reed reminded me of a younger version of me like a very overly zealous religious person who wasn't ready to accept accept anyone else or 
to love anyone else outside of my church circles. This was actually a very fascinating concept for me to read. It challenged me to think more critically about who to listen to in terms of religious authority. This was the first book that ended up gripping me to the point that I could not stop thinking about it, to the point that I think I wanted to revisit it and give it a higher rating. And I did. I gave this book a higher rating and I'm in love with it now. The book series is pretty much preaching a specific message and that specific message is that love is unconditional. Love transcends all bigotry. That is exactly what this book series is about. And if anything, I should have saw it earlier and I'm really happy that I ended up seeing it eventually. That's why this series is one of my favorites. The next book I want to bring up is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armitrout. Could mention that series over there, but that series technically just put me into a reading slump, so we're not going to talk about that series right now. <laughs> so I'm not bringing up the Dark Element series because I actually read Storm and Fury first before I even knew that it was a spinoff to the Dark Element series. So I read this book, I put the series down, I went back to the Dark Element series, and then I went back to this book, and then I continued on with the rest of the trilogy. And what I do have to say is this book alone alone took me down the rabbit hole and I got so obsessed with this world and these characters. I would absolutely love it if Jennifer L. Armentrout wrote another book series in this world because like I could follow another couple if we could. I'm really happy that we got Zane's story. I don't really like the Dark Element series itself. That trilogy was so centered around its love triangle. I'm just happy that we got to the good stuff in the Harbinger series. I loved getting engrossed and invested in Trinity and Zane's life. I loved these characters characters so much. Very good with getting me back into a new world. I read this book twice. I, I read the entire six books in this world. I was engrossed. I was invested. It definitely brought me in a very bad book hangover, but what I do have to say is it got me out of a really bad reading slump. For that, I do appreciate it. And now I have to bring up a bunch of books by Tessa Bailey. First of all, I'm going to start off with my first ever Tessa Bailey book, and that was It Happened One Summer. At the very end of the year, usually around December, I don't necessarily read a lot, and I choose not to read a lot, but because I want to save the majority of my reading energy for January of the next year. That's essentially what I did for January. However, when <laughs> January started, I wasn't necessarily motivated to pick anything up. I just decided, okay, I'm just gonna try a summer contemporary and see how we go. But let me tell you, that was the perfect choice because this not only got me out of a reading slump, it got me back into contemporary romance. And I'm so happy that I got back into contemporary romance. I've literally been on a hiatus from contemporary romance for years. And we're finally here. And I really love this story by Tessa Bailey. It's probably one of my favorite Tessa Bailey novels. This is definitely my favorite out of the two books in this duology, the Bellinger Sisters companion series. I just felt like this was a very good fleshed out contemporary story that I could really sink my teeth into that had a pretty good plot. It definitely changed the game in terms of my reading life. Then I'm going to talk about the Hot and Hammered series. Now, I read this series this month as I'm speaking and oh my goodness. I devoured all three of these books within 48 hours. I was obsessed. Probably my favorite book by Tessa Bailey has got to be Love Her or Lose Her because this is a second chance romance and it takes place within a marriage that has gone on for around 10 years. As someone who is married and who is continuously working on their marriage, not only that, doing a lot of things intentionally in marriage based on love languages. Yes, guys, love languages are important if you want a free tip on how to have a successful marriage. Keep the love languages in mind and be intentional about them. I love that this book addressed that. It talked about about that. That is very realistic. It actually does work. Pretty much all three of these novels follow a different person within this female friendship group. I reckon that this series has something good for everyone, whether they are single, whether they're in the early stages of dating, whether they are married or like somewhere within marriage. I just recommend this series because it has something for anyone. It was very easy to read, very easy to engross yourself in. You just get so invested in these characters. I definitely recommend this series if you are looking for a good contemporary-esque romance book series. But not only that, if you're looking for some steam and some uh, very spicy talk, this series is for you. The final book that I want to bring up that got me out of a reading slump, that actually got me out of a reading slump today. It took a while, but we got there eventually. <laughs> like when I say a while, like 100 pages, but we got there eventually. I read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I loved this romance novel. Not necessarily because I loved the romance. The romance was a good aspect of the story, but I like the concept of the story. It essentially has the fake dating, not necessarily fake dating, more like fake marriage scenario. And 
the concept is pretty much the sister of the bride is taking her sister's honeymoon because her sister and the groom essentially get sick after their wedding and can't take the honeymoon they can't rain check they can't cancel anything it's like a terrible situation to be in but the sister of the bride and the brother of the groom technically have like an unsure dynamic between them like they don't necessarily like each other and they're forced to kind of go on this trip together to fill in the spot for their sibling and oh my goodness it's such a cool concept for a pretty cool romance story really enjoyed this for the concept i don't know i really like summery holiday-esque stories where you can just fully escape and i just found that to be very entertaining and so it was very entertaining because when you are in a reading slump you technically do want to escape this book had a perfect escapism factor to it so i would recommend this if you are looking for a new contemporary-esque story i'm looking forward to reading more by christina lauren it really saved the day today since reading the unhoneymooners i've started my next book and oh my goodness i have them to thank so i guess that's gonna be it for this video today book lovers if you happen to stay till the end of the video leave me the pink heart emoji with like the extra small pink heart on top of it i personally like that emoji and hey we've been talking about some romance so i just thought that it was kind of fitting if you happen to enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers and also i have social medias matthias was books on twitter and instagram and i'm also goodreads that's www.goodreads.com slash gswizzle and finally i'm at tiktok i'm at gswizzle on tiktok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content i love you book lovers and i will see you later peace